Hey guys, this is Zion Production Sega in the 4673, and I am back in Essence. So yeah, this is a uh, a game I just recently found, and uh, it's the demo, by the way. But I heard it should be pretty long, and I want to play it. And it looks good, from what I can see here, and. To be honest, I don't really know anything about this game. Uh, I'm rambling. But anyways, uh, I'm sick. Which is terrifying since I'm always sick. <laughs> I hate my body. Uh, yeah, I have, I guess, a cold, something like that. Uh, but if you hear some really disgusting coughing, then you know it's me. So I'm very sorry. <clears throat> Uh, but hey, let's just uh, get this thing started. I am looking forward to this because I do think this is pretty cool. So let's go! <coughs> It's too loud. I need to get that freaking volume down. There you go. Like that. Red. Red before black. If I ever had a life that was all lit before... If I ever had a life that was all lit before this... A word in something insumable darkness consumed everything I was. They're all I remember and all I can think about. I try to attach the only co the one color I know that feel human. Things that only humans feel. Red furry. Red passion. And the only thing all humans have. Red blood. It runs like water. Like water into rivers. Like rivers into the ocean. Like the ocean of noises, chittering, chittering in my head, crashing in a wave of synth cronus, click, clicks and beeps. I'd like to think that the flowing mechanical noises of blood that it causes through me makes me human. But the more blood precedes the great, but more because blood precedes the great escape, death. I would equate this. Equate, equate this blackness with death, but I know that uh, I know only by the maddening ca Whoa, there's so many words, cacof cacophony in my head, that it is too much, too loud to be dead. It's much too loud to be dead, that the only thing, and that only living things die. I'm sorry, I'm going to get into this now. And this colorless void, predated, predated by the, uh, only by my legacy of red, is nothing like the life of human le humans lead. This realization ensures that there was something before this tenebri tenebrity, and that was there, and is a me. All right, this is confusing. Me, a soundless voice. Deaf ears, sightless eyes. I think of the noises. Or hear as the echo of my thoughts. The only indication that I have a mind. When did my mind even begin? Will there ever be an end to this dreadful abyss? Well, I don't know. Through this torture, I feel like I'm paying penance for something. But what have I done? Even more. Why can't I remember who I am? Just the word who assures me. It lets me know I am more than this darkness. I am someone. But who? Did I do something wrong? I can only remember red. Red furry. Red passion. Red blood before it black. I want to wake up. I want to prove that I'm not, a, not the bad person these crumpling thoughts suggest I am. But do I really want to live if I am as red as my thoughts? For weeks, 
months, I don't know how long. In this place there's no time. For an eternity I've paid penance for my sins, struggling to rest from redemption from this blackness. Have I suffered enough yet? There's no silence, no peace, and never an answer to these questions. Just unending darkness, harsh noise, and the memory of red. Do I even deserve another chance? Please, God, in this blackness, is there even a God to pray to? Who would hear my cries with forgiveness? If there is, oh please, please hear me. If you smile down on humans, will you smile down on whatever I am too? For another chance, I'd do anything. There is darkness in this wo in the world I remember, but there is also light. I know, I know, even though it's, even though it eludes my memory. Show me that this darkness is not all life. It's not all life is. That any hopes of light are not all in vain for me. Because if all life is darkness, then I don't want to live at all. Whoa, whoa, whoa! I don't think so. I've been waiting here, too, here too dang long for you to cop out now. What? Did I say that out loud? Did someone hear me? If I had a voice, I'd be using it to scream. After all, this time, after all this time. I hear something other than these horrible clicks and beeps, but how? Why now, all of a sudden? Come on, you're giving me so much grief. You sure, sure as heck better live. It comes again, resonating throughout my being. The intruder's voice beckons me, calling me from the, from the gloom that once, that once tortures now feels like a san sanctuary. As I cling to it, I feel warmth pulling me away. See light gleaming from behind the door opened upon a dark room. I don't need anyone to tell me to realize it. Nobody would anyway. Someone hurt me, and they're really giving me another chance? Even though I asked for this, I feel so hesitant to claim it. I know that there will be no turning back, no dark blanket to hide me, hide me once I open my eyes. I could be a murderer. Or, you've taken nine godforsaking months already. How much time do you need? The voice is right, it's taking long enough. I push my mind from its bed, stretch its wobbly legs, and flip on the lights. And like a trigger, electri ele electricity shots through my limbs, my eyes, and they flutter open for the first time in ages. Oh! That's me. Hello, pink-haired girl. Ah, it's too much. Colors flash, flash before me all at once, diffusing the blackness that ensnared my brain for so long. The light swipes my mind clean, freeing me, if only for now, the endless cycle of red before black. <coughs> I'm sorry. I can still rem I still can't remember anything. I can hardly recall there was any, there was darkness to begin with. It's so bright now. I'm filled with uh, when I was so hollow just moments before. But still, I feel so. Oh, hello there, you. Startled, I shrink back. The voice from before takes the shape of a teenage boy, jet black, jet hair, shielding one of the two piercing eyes. He. Whoa, his jeans couldn't be any tighter. <laughs> That's the first thing you think about. <laughs> Not, uh, his clothes looks pretty weird. Just, just the jeans that tight. <laughs> so that's why you're looking. <laughs> okay, I'll stop now. I'm stopping. <laughs> ah, focus. This is my first conversation with this guy, and it could be the crux of our entire relationship. I have no idea what's going on, so I need to ask him. Where am I? Who are you? Surely he... Ugh. Sorry, I know I'm supposed to be keeping up a serious narrative here, but those jeans are so distracting! <laughs> I love his music. <laughs> what? He gazes shift from my face to the whole of my 
reaching us and burning into his jeans. <laughs> what the fuck? I'm sorry. He glances up back briskly. Got a problem with my pants? Yeah, I've been found out. Um, I'm sorry, it's just, they're actually maybe sort of really tight. Good observed. Oh, nice. We're a moron. <laughs> He stares, not good, in desperate attempt to save myself, I let loose every thought as it pops into my head. Yeah, I just, I mean, your scarf, your scarf is just so, well, last season or something, you know? Sorry, I thought you looked savvy, what's, what with your pants, I mean, not your pants, it's all, I thought you looked no better. Staring, a hint of color in his cheeks. I take it back. It is your pants, and I mean, not your. <laughs> Damn, we're awkward. I mean, not your pants. I would never just stare at pants. <laughs> your headphones and that band thing over your leg is just shiny like uh, gems. Uh, really, please out your pants. I mean, eyes. <laughs> Damn! <laughs> Flatter, you obviously not. Does not work on this guy either. He just stares, his face slowly contouring redder and redder. Can I just pass and go collect two hundred dollars if I tell you that I was really gawking at your incredibly tight pants for the whole time? <laughs> this has completely destroyed any credibility by narr my narrative could have possessed. Why do tight jeans have to be the first thing I wake up to? You can't be expected not to notice. <laughs> he finally explodes. What is this? I haven't been waiting here. Uh, all this time for you to cri criticize my fashion sense, you whack job. You know, you're fairly, you're firing po poorly if you call the rap jack only three minutes into the beginning of your existence. I tried. The, bun bo the boy clenches his fist. I'm here because I see the thought fade from his eye, eye as he rovers over my face. Abruptly, he turns away, too incensed to finish speaking. My eyes follow his form as he paces to, to and fro, trying to regain his composure, as survey, as survey my f surroundings. In this dark, dilapidated well, dilapidated facility, frayed wires and cords snake around every corner and cranny. Light dapples the floor sparingly, each beam passing through through scattered as small as small as pe pinholes. Machines or computers, some dissembled, uh, lay shattered on the floor. Even tables and chairs lie in shambles, overturned as if as in a struggle. Somehow I recall these objects, and even though I have enough sense to realize they are all in a pair of yeah, never mind. In this abandoned laboratory, only I and the board remain functional, and I doubt even my functional functionality at the moment, judging from my first failed conversation. Watching the boy stand, I realized I'm seated, reclining in a chair up upholstered in a leather and strewn with cables as thick as hoses. I decide to test out my own legs. With, with surprising ease, they swing from the chair and glide across the floor, albeit a little creakily. I wonder exactly how long I was asleep. Did he say nine months? <coughs> the boy breathes heavily, through, uh, though less so bef than before. His face becomes pale again, too, his cheeks cooling. Even so, he looks so warm. I, however, feel very cold. Why? Even after he rejoins me, he won't meet my eyes. Well, uh, well, you get your fill of staring stupidly around yet? But what reason does he have to be so biting? His meanness wells up as a nasty response in me. You finished pinch pinching your ch tantrum yet? Pitching? Yeah, pitching. Ouch. His face flashes with the same anger as before. Oh boy, he quickly, but he quickly suppresses his fitly, 
fiddling with her his headphones.